In Jeremiah 33, verse 2, this is what the Word of God says. It says, Thus saith the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it, to establish it. The Lord is his name. And I guess in my own heart is that many times we don't really understand who God really is. And we don't necessarily understand the impact and the power and the majesty and the glory and everything that God represents when we come and talk to him. We might talk to him as, you know, hey God, or something like that. And we've mostly read the book, hey God. And... But there's something about God that I believe that he wants the church to get a fresh revelation that God is the God who made everything. He formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. And the Lord who formed and established everything said and speaks to you and me. It's not the council, it's not the Lord Mayor, it's not the, the this or that. It's God himself that wants to talk to you and me as an individual. And the Lord who, who did this, formed everything, verse 3 says this, he says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. The great and mighty things are inaccessible things in the natural, things that we cannot do. And the same God that established everything and formed everything, who is God, said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. I believe that God has called us all to have a walk of trust and a walk of prayer. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Direct means He wants to make smooth or make straight your path. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Calling, trusting really is prayer. Prayer really is calling and trusting. And so when we, when God speaks to us or when God talks to us through his word or whatever it might be, he's wanting to take us somewhere. He wants to do something in us. Prayer is not writing out a Christmas list and waiting for Santa to turn up with the goods. I believe prayer is coming into agreement with the Word of God and declaring what God says in His Word can be done on earth and can be yours. Whatever He says can be yours. In Matthew 6, 9 through 13, we have the Lord's Prayer as we call it. Our Father who art in heaven. Our God is in heaven. He's, a, he's an angelic. He's, he's, I can't even describe the the magnitude and the, the magnificence and everything about who God really is. But our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What a wonderful name it is. What an amazing name it is. Some people I know they might jokingly say that they can't pray for long, but you just go through this and start to go line for line and start to meditate on it and, and just start to think about the name of Jesus. Think about God in heaven. Think about when God created heaven and earth and when God spoke and said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Let us contemplate on, on God's creation, how God never made a mistake. We know there's an enemy out there that comes to rob, to kill and destroy, but God wants to come and in His light and in His power and His majesty and raise us up so that we can overcome. We can understand what Chris was saying today, that it's a finished work. I, I have given you everything that you need. My Father who is in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. What a wonderful name that we can call in our darkest hour. We can call upon that name which is above every name and at that name we can be totally set free. Goes on thy kingdom come. A lot of people when they, when they pray that, that they, they're looking for the rapture. I think it's about time that the, that the church got its eyes off the rapture and let God sort that out. And get our eyes on what God wants us to do here and now. If you're just, I've got your mind on the rapture all the time and you're waiting for the rapture, I'm going to tell you there's too many people that I've seen and heard that have told me that God spoke to them and said that he, that he was coming back before they died and some of them have been dead 20 and 30 years. I believe that Jesus was coming back when I first got saved in five years. That's why I never planted a mango tree. <laughs> but that thy kingdom come, that's not the return of Jesus. That's to establish God's kingdom on this planet. And it won't happen if we're, if we're just playing tiddlywinks or if we're tip-throwing throwing through the tulips with Tiny Tim and we have this sort of religiosity thing in our minds. I ought to tell you, friends, walking with Jesus is a walk that you've got to walk strong. Amen. You've got to make some declarations. That song that we sing in there, I will live and not die, that is a declaration. We will overcome. Amen. We start making declarations. The devil will not destroy us. The devil will not destroy the church. A lot of people talk about what's going on in the church, but I want to tell you, God said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And I want to tell you, I'm not going to listen to the prophets of doom. I'm going to listen to the word of God, that God is going to raise up a church. He's going to anoint his people. They're going to go forth with power, with authority. They're going to cast out devils. Hallelujah. They're going to raise the dead. They're going to heal the sick. And they're going to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. That's what we're here for. But if you just want to wait around for the rapture, well, enjoy the ride. Not writing out a list. Thy kingdom come. It's to establish the kingdom on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, I want to tell you, there's a lot of forgiveness that's got to be done. I don't know anybody in the kingdom of God. I don't know any person that's ever, ever give, given their lives to Jesus. I don't know anybody that claims the name of Jesus that hasn't been hurt. The enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He goes around pouring out his wrath and his fury. He goes out causing trouble. That's what he is. He's a stirrer. He's a troublemaker. But I want to tell you, our God reigns. Amen. And if we can do what God says, that thing will not linger on you. That thing will not take you down. It not, will, will not destroy your relationship. But I want to tell you, you can overcome and you can triumph over everything. And we start making declarations. I will not allow that thing to destroy my life. I am going to choose to do what Jesus says and I am going to choose to forgive. I've been ringing up a few people lately and if I've rung you up lately, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> but there's a few things that I've had to sort out. Anybody here need to sort a few things out? Shakabundi, well, don't wait till you get to heaven because they don't have a telephone up there. Give us our trespasses that we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. From, deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You believe that today? You don't have to get so excited in this church today. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Acts 17, 26 says this. For he has made from one blood, I've written down one sacrifice, one Lord. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on, on all the face of the earth. He has made of one blood every man that dwells on the face of the earth. And he has determined their pre-appointed times 
and the boundaries of their dwellings. And he did all of that without a computer. He did all of that without Sarah. What's his name? What's her name? Siri. 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 He did all that without that other lady that's in my phone that knows where everything is. He did all that because he is the creator. And he set the boundaries. It says the peer point of times and their boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord. This is our part. And I believe that this is where God is bringing the church like never before. He's bringing the people of God to a place where we will fall on our face before the very throne or the very presence or whatever it is before God himself and start to cry out to God and believe for a move of His Spirit. It won't happen just because, you know, we, we think it might happen. It'll happen when we make it happen. It will happen when we declare it. They should seek the Lord. This is our part. In the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him, though He's not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and we move and we have our being. I read a, I've been re reading a book, and there's a story in this book that I just want to bring a little bit if I can. And I know the saying, fighting the good fight of faith. Because you see, as I said before, there's not one person here that most surely isn't going through or had things around our lives. There's not, things, there's not one person here that haven't had the enemy try to destroy our lives or our ministry or the call of God so that we'll give up on God. It happens, friends. You are not Robinson Crusoe. You're not the only person on this island. The devil can make you think you're the only person that is going through what you're going through. I've got news for you, friends. If we're prepared to shut our eyes and, and shame the devil so nobody can see us, we're all in the same boat. Amen? Anybody else want to wave their hand this morning? We're all in the same boat. The enemy goes out to destroy this was a story about a pastor of a growing church in America. He spoke about his oldest daughter, Chrissy. She'd been a model child growing up, but at the age of 16, she began to stray. Chrissy, uh, Chrissy drew away from her family and God. She left home. Her parents had no idea where she was. Her boyfriend was everything they did not want for their child. The parents were broken and they didn't know uh, how they could continue in ministry. The devil kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. The woman was, had, a, had to have a hysterectomy, his wife, and they were at the lowest ebb. And while she was at that lowest ebb, the devil came and spoke to the mother. This church was a growing church. It actually grew to over 10,000 people. But the enemy was after it. It was trying to destroy it. The enemy said, you and your husband can go ahead and reach the world for Christ, but I'm going to have your children. I've already got one, and I'm coming for the next two. I might get a bit emotional here. I hope you can just bear with me. Because I've got, a, I've, I've got something inside of me that's got a hatred for that enemy. Amen. And I don't want to see him triumphing over the people of God. I watched too many people get destroyed. I watched too many people get broken. I've, because, friend, the enemy does come. But the greater one dwells within you. Amen. Amen. And if we can draw upon the greater power, we will overcome. We will triumph over the devil. Amen. And his works. This woman, this poor woman... She, she said to her husband, she said, we're going to have to leave. We're going to have to get out. This city that we're in, it's a horrible city. It, it's already consumed one of our children. And now I've, we've just got to get out of here so we, can, so we can rescue our family and save our children. And the husband there, he said, I don't know what to do. I, I got a call of God. I'm all, I don't know what to do. And they spoke and they decided that they would stay. And then... It's amazing who the enemy uses for his little helpers. 
It says, then one November, I was alone in Florida when I received a call from a minister who I, who I had persuaded Chrissy to talk to. Jimmy said, I love you and your wife, but the truth of the matter is, Chrissy's going to do what Chrissy's going to do, and you really have, don't have any choice. Now that she's 18, she, they went through this for two and a half years. She's determined, and you're going to have to accept what she decides. It's an interesting thing, as I saw the field books come in this morning, and I was there the night when, you're, when the doctor said you were dead. I was there when you, the night when your mother said, No! Oh, the guy. Sorry about the problem. <laughs> Frightened myself then. <laughs> Don't tolerate what the devil wants to do. Don't put up with what the devil wants to do. Because the enemy will send little helpers to you. Sometimes they're in the form of, 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 a, of I don't know what, somebody there that you, they say, I love you, but I'm going to give you poison. I'm going to tell you you've got no hope. I'm going to tell you you can't do anything about it. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you that. You've got to stand up and you've got to say, no! No, 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 no. Something has got to rise up within the church. The church has gone to sleep singing lullabies, wanting to drink cappuccinos. There's nothing wrong with cappuccino. I like a cappuccino. But that's not church. I hung up the phone something very deep within me began to cry out, never, I will never accept Chrissy being away from you, Lord. I won't accept what the enemy is trying to say. Friend, I'm going to accept what God says. Amen. There came a divine showdown. God strongly impressed me to stop crying, screaming, and talking to anyone else about Chrissy. You might have remembered a few weeks ago I started to share about don't make the wall that God wants to just pull down a wailing wall. I don't know how I said it now, but anyhow... <laughs> No one's just crying and screaming and talking to anyone else about Chrissy. I was to converse with no one but God. In fact, I knew I should have no further contact with Chrissy until God acted. I was just to believe and obey what I'd preached so often. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. Friend, I want to tell you it's a time to start calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time for the church to wake up and begin to declare what God says. It says, I dissolved in a flood of tears and I knew I had to let go of the situation. One cold Tuesday night during the prayer meeting, I talked about the about, sorry, I talked from Acts 4 about the church boldly calling on God in the face of persecution. We entered into a time of prayer, everyone reaching out to the Lord sim simultaneously. The usher handed me a note, a young woman who I felt to be spiritually sensitive had written, Pastor, I feel impressed that we should stop the meeting and pray for your daughter. I hesitated. Was it right to change the flow of the service and focus on my personal need? Yet something in the note seemed to ring true. In a few minutes I picked up the microphone and I told the congregation what had just happened. The truth of the matter I said, although I have talked, haven't talked much about it, that my daughter is far away from God in these days, 
She thinks up is down and down is up, dark is light and light is dark. But I know God can break through to her. So I'm going to ask Pastor, and I'll just put Fred, to lead us in prayer for Chrissy. Let us all join hands against around the sanctuary. As my associate began to lead the people, I stood behind him with my hand on his back. My tear ducts had run dry, but I, but I prayed the best I knew. A sense of desperate determination, as if to say, Satan, you will not have this girl. Take your hands off her. She's coming back. I was overwhelmed. The force of that vast throng calling on God almost literally knocked me over. When I got home that night, Carol was waiting up for me. We sat at the kitchen table drinking coffee, and I said, it's over. What's over, she wondered. It's over with Christy. You should have been in the prayer meeting tonight, I tell you, if there's a God in heaven the whole nightmare is finally over. I described what had taken place. 32. <laughs> 32 hours later on, Thursday morning, as I was shaving, Carol suddenly burst through the door, her eyes wide. Go downstairs. Go downstairs, she blurted. Chrissy's here. Chrissy's here. I don't normally do this. Chrissy's here. Go down. But Carol, I, I, just go down, she urged. It's you she wants to see. I wiped off the shaving cream and headed down the stairs, my heart pounding. As I came around the corner, I saw my daughter in the kitchen floor, rocking with her hands and knees, rocking on her hands and knees, sobbing. Cautiously, I spoke her name, Chrissy. She grabbed my pant leg and began pounding out her anguish. Daddy, Daddy. I've sinned against God, I've sinned against myself, I've sinned against you and mummy. Please forgive me. My vision was so clouded with tears as hers. I pulled her up from the floor and held her close. As we cried together, suddenly she drew back. Daddy, she said with a start, who was praying for me? Who was praying for me? Her voice was like that of a cross-examining attorney. What do you mean, Chrissy? On Tuesday night, Daddy, who was praying for me? Church, if we don't pray, nothing's going to change. On Tuesday night, Daddy, who was praying for me? I didn't say anything, so she continued. In the middle of the night, God woke me and showed me I was heading towards an abyss. There was no bottom to it. It scared me to death. I was so frightened. I realized how hard I'd been, how wrong, how rebellious. But at the same time, it was like God wrapped his arms around me and held me tight. He kept me from sliding further and he said, I still love you. Daddy, tell me the truth. He was praying for me Tuesday night. I looked into her bloodshot eyes, and once again, I recognized the daughter we had raised. It says that Chrissy's return to the Lord became very, very evident immediately. She went to Bible school. She met a man, and then now pastoring a church in America somewhere. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Not much will change without prayer. That's why tonight I'm going to go back to the hub. 
I'm going to go back to the hub and I'm going to fall on my face before God and I'm going to cry out to God. And if you want to come and you want to be part of it, come and be part of it. If you can't be part of it, will you pray at home? Let's see if God can turn the tide. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week also. I want to say this. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on your daughter, your son, your friends. It's never too late. I'm sorry for that, but... Oh, that's your good. <laughs> I feel better now. <laughs> I feel better now. Friends, we number one, we all need a meaningful relationship with God. It's not a matter of just going to church, is it? It's not a matter of just being in church. It's having a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ. Letting God come into our lives. Letting God be God. If you've got somebody that's on your heart right now, could start right now. If you've got somebody on your heart right now that really needs God, needs a special breakthrough, would you stand to your feet? Wishing won't get the job done. Just waiting around for a rapture won't get the job done. I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting with Jesus. why don't we just pray in the Spirit? Why don't you let the Spirit of God touch your heart? Oh, Father God, Father God, we, oh my God. Oh my God, we come before you right now. We just cry out to you, Father. We cry out to you, my God, my God, my God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just come to you right now when we cry out. You know, Friends, it's about time we made God's house again a house of prayer. He never says anywhere in His Word, let my house be a house of preaching. He said, my house should be a house of prayer. Yes, there should be preaching. Yes, I believe in it. But friend, let's, let's, let's pray as well. Come on, pray. Come on, start to pray. Start to pray. Father, if you've got something on your heart right now and you, you're feeling the urge to pray, start to pray. Pray out loud. Pray out for Jesus to come in his mighty way. Touch us again, Father God. Touch us by your Spirit. Let the mighty anointing of God come again. Oh, Father God, touch us. Stir your church again. Lord, that we would bow before you, that we would pray. We would pray and we would pray and we would pray, my God. We would not pray negative prayers, but we would pray your word. We would believe that you, will go, you are going to build your church and that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Satan, you will not have the Sunshine Coast. Satan, you will not have the youth of this nation. Satan, you will not have this nation. You will not have this nation. This nation is called the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. And my God, this nation belongs to you. Hallelujah. This nation is your nation. If we are your people, Satan, get your filthy hand. Get your filthy hands off God's people. I just sense right now that there's somebody here. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You've done your own thing. You've done your own way. But you realize that you need a Savior. I also believe that there's a couple of people here this morning that 
you know you've gone cold. That relationship that you've had with Jesus is not like it was. You know if you continue to go the way you're going, it's, I believe that God's touching your life this morning. If you need to give your life to Jesus, would you come and give your life to Christ? Well, they're just singing that one more time. And if you're here this morning and you know that, that you need this to come back again, stand before God and say, God, I, I want to come back. You've drifted away. That's why we're singing that one, more, that one more time. You can come right now. Don't be shy. That's you, just quickly come.